Hey guys, welcome to the Q&A slash bookshelf tour video that I am doing to celebrate and thank you guys for helping me to reach 20,000 subscribers on this channel. First of all, thank you guys everybody who submitted a question. I have quite a few of them here in front of me and I want to try to get through them quickly and not spend too much time on any one question and this is just for myself because I know that I have the tendency to ramble or overthink things. I'm just going to try to make it quick and to the point and as we go we'll look at the bookshelf a bit as well. Okay? Okay. Alright, first question is what made you want to start doing reactions? Were you just tired of gaming or just knew that the reaction channel would do better? Well, no, I'm not tired of gaming. That is my number one passion, always and forever. I think gaming is a very exciting art form that creativity can flourish and there's endless possibilities with what these developers can do from an art perspective, from a story perspective, and so many things. Uh, did I know the reaction channel would do better? No, I had no idea. And probably to my own detriment, I've never been one to think about like, what can I do to get the most views? I just do what makes me happy, what I'm passionate about. I play the games I want to play and I watch the things for the reactions now that I'm doing those that I want to watch. So what made me want to start doing reactions? It's as simple as a few people suggested it to me. I had just started my Patreon page, so I thought it would be nice to have more like reasons for people to join it. And also, I thought it would be a great excuse for me to get back into watching anime. And, well, the direction of the channel didn't really end up going that way, but that's fine. Okay, that was a long answer. Okay, we gotta get shorter with these. <sighs> you can do it. You can do it, Bunny Tails. Okay, do you have any contact with other reactors, such as Jen Murray, for example? Also, do you plan on reacting to the other Star Trek TOS movies before looking at TNG? Uh, for the first part of the question, Mm, not kind of not really I don't really watch reaction channels that much I am interested in the ones that are watching uh, Star Trek so I do love target audience and Jen Murray but I'm not really the social type so I just kind of enjoy from afar and the question that I've answered multiple times but there's always new people and they're always asking me uh, about my like what I'm watching if I'm watching this or that as far as the Star Trek reactions go Yes, we will be watching the movies before TNG the TOS movies Also, we're gonna be watching the animated series and Star Trek continues. So animated series Star Trek continues TOS movies TNG That's the that's the game plan and no, we're not stopping there Okay, this question with two channels to juggle, have you ever considered putting videos out on a two-week basis rather than a one-week basis? Um, honestly, I'm not sure I really understand the question. I do have kind of a weekly schedule. I put out seven videos on the gaming channel a week, one every day. Those are really quick and easy to edit, so it doesn't take much time at all. And then I have made a goal for myself to do one Star Trek and one... Korra slash Avatar video every week and then movies whenever I possibly can fit them in. I see it says I worry about overcommitment on your part. You should worry. I've always overworked myself but it's because I love doing this and I just wish I had more time to do more but yes it's not healthy the amount of work that I put into this but have I really considered pulling back on that? No. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep this as quick as possible. I have a lot of little knickknacks um, from different video games and anime and things like that. I'm not going to explain what everything's from. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments about anything here specifically. And um, just pause the video if you want to see something up close. But anyways, over here I have Cuphead. Lapras and uh, a turtle just chilling there because I don't I don't know what else to put there I think I need another bookshelf or something okay moving up here I have my Elden Ring collector's edition and a statue of Artorias and Melania oh her sword there we go I was trying to dust but it didn't really work so I, I had to move her sword but anyways there she is she's beautiful Geralt, Ciri, and a random elf 
from Elder Scrolls Online, which I never played. Some Doctor Who stuff, as you can see. Very cool, very cool. This is Saray and Miklio, if you know, you know. Here's some Kingdom Hearts stuff. Kingdom Hearts 3. Have Axel there, little sea salt popsicle. Down here I have some Doctor Who fairy tales. The TOS photo novels. Um, I'm going to open them up and get them all sorted when I finish the original series, Season 3. I think I have seen all of these episodes except for this one, All Our Yesterdays. And this is a book that was gifted to me recently. It's a Star Trek book, so I guess it'll be my first one. It's a used copy. Here it is. Over here we have a Red Yoshi and, of course, Aang from Avatar. Some controllers down here. And this shelf, we're going to get to that last. That little section we're going to do last. So up here, at the very top of my bookshelf, I have my StarCraft II Collector's Editions. Moving down here, we have some games for the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch. There's Ed, Aiba, and Nanachi. Avatar, Rise of Kyoshi, North Myth that inspired Final Fantasy VII. Here's another Final Fantasy VII novel and some mangas and the best one here, Uzumaki. An excellent, excellent horror manga that you guys should all read. Here is a little scene that I have from Final Fantasy VI. We're going to move that out of the way. Okay, so these are all games. I have some PC games. Uh, just pause the video if you want to see anything more clearly, if you want to look in depth. But I have PS2, even though I don't own a PS2 anymore. PS3. PS4. And PS5. And I'm running out of space. There you go. Pause it if you need to see. I have some soundtracks, Persona 5 and Final Fantasy VI soundtracks, my first video game soundtracks. If you were trapped on an island and you could only have one movie and one game, what would they be? Movies is a tough one because movies only last a certain amount of time, so it's something you have to be able to watch over and over again. I think if you're trapped on an island, it should be something that is very entertaining and uplifting and funny. I think The Fifth Element would be a great movie uh, for me personally to just kind of watch over and over. It has some music, it has some action, it has comedy, it has romance, it's sci-fi. I'm sure I could maybe think of something better, but I don't know. And then as far as the game one goes, uh, that's really tough because the games that I play are the ones that have like a narrative and they usually kind of have a start and an end point. I don't normally play games that you can just kind of like play forever. Like, I don't really play games that are meant to be played for like years and years and years. But I think Elden Ring would be a great game to have on a deserted island. It's so huge. There's a wonderful world to explore. So many things to discover. There will always be a challenge present and there's just a lot of replayability with like different builds and ways that you can approach the game and you can do it differently every time. I think that would be a perfect one. Okay, where did the name Bunny Tails originate? Pretty simple answer here. My mom, she always called me her little bunny because of the way I walk. Apparently I have a little hop to my step or something like that. I don't know. I've never seen myself walk. I'm usually the one walking. Um... And the tails part, uh, I can't really recall, but probably I pulled it from My Little Pony Tales, which was a show I really liked when I was a kid. Um, of course, it's T-A-L-E-S in that, but uh, I'm not really sure. But yeah, Bunny, that's, that's me. My mom always called me her little bunny. If you could go back in time and give one Star Trek TOS character their own spin-off series, who would it be? Scotty. I just think that would be amazingly amusing and funny and I would I would very much enjoy that. Yes, Scotty, for sure. 
Do you have any short-term ambitions for either yourself or the channel or any long-term ambitions slash dreams for yourself or the channel? I'm not really a very ambitious person. I'm not really a very goal-oriented person. I just kind of live in the moment and that's not always a good thing. But the one thing that I can think of right now is that I would love to be able to find an editor to be able to help me with editing the movie reactions so I can do those more frequently. And then in turn, I'd be able to also do the like more Star Trek reactions more frequently if I had somebody to help me out with editing because that's really the part that takes the most time. But it is very expensive to hire and uh, my videos don't get a lot of ad revenue compared to some of the other channels that have like much higher views. So it's really hard for me to pay like $100 50 200 dollars to have someone edit the movie reaction when the revenue from that movie might be like 20 to 60 dollars like if i could break even oh my gosh i would i would go crazy with having someone edit them for me but right now i can't so i'm just trying to keep putting out the content working as hard as i can and hoping that you know over time we can grow and we'll be able to have more freedom to, to do or more things more quickly and things like that. Okay, moving down. There's a panda. I'll just move him really quick. This is my like thriller, I guess, and other stuff similar. Um, so I have a bunch of Ken Follett. This is my favorite book of all time. The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett wonderful epic epic story let's see takes place during 12th century england and basically it's a story of a community coming together to build a cathedral and it takes generations to do it beautiful story ken follett i haven't read him in a long time but he's one of my favorite authors i have some john grisham some tom clancy um and some other stuff. Moby Dick. Moby Dick, Jurassic Park. Okay, moving down, I have my sci-fi shelf, which of course is being over overloaded with books. I have some uh, Dune stuff, of course. Titan by John Varley. I'd love to reread that. Never read the sequel. Um... Orson Scott Card. I have the Mass Effect trilogy here. And then Star Wars The New Jedi Order. I have the full series there. Oh, and that's Groot and that's PB from Mass Effect Andromeda. These are some Star Wars dudes as you can see. Alright, moving down. These guys are from Yuri on Ice. Here's Spock and here is Uhura. Now, Spock, I found him recently in a box. He's my husband's, but I stole him. He's mine now. And Uhura was gifted to me by Stogie. So thank you, Stogie, and it's Mirror Mirror Uhura. Isn't she beautiful? And on this side, we have Ryuk, Spike, and the guy from Ancient Magus Bride. Uh, what's his name? Elias or something? All right, we're going to move those out of the way. This is my fantasy shelf. I have some Lord of the Rings. I have uh, this awesome series. It has the Black Cauldron in it. Starting from here and going all the way to here, this is stuff that I read when I was in, like, uh, I want to say elementary or middle school and high, like, high school. So they're kind of like young adult, but I remember really loving them. I'd love to reread. Um, Susan Cooper, I think they made a movie of this one too, The Dark is Rising. This was a great, awesome, awesome series. And then uh, this series with the dragons by Patricia C. Reed, this was my absolute favorite series. Um, it's kind of, there we go. There's a glare. And you can see I haven't taken care of these very well because I learned a very bad habit from my dad on how to hold my books. And once my books started falling apart, I realized that that wasn't a good idea and I wasn't going to do that anymore. 
but these were my favorite, the Dragon's Books. And then I have a bunch of Drizzt novels from Dungeons & Dragons, Legend of Drizzt. I have, mm, it looks like 16 of them. Yeah. 1 through 13, and then the uh, three prequels. If you were a Star Trek screenplay writer back in the 60s, what story would you write? This is a very excellent question that I absolutely hate because I am not really a very creative person. Person. I've never really wanted to write something or create my own story. I just really enjoy experiencing other people's stories. So it's not something I ever have really thought about. My story would be Uhura. It would be focused on Uhura and Janice Rand. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what they'd be doing, but it would be something really fun and amazing. And there would definitely be some sort of singing and dancing involved. A green Orion girl. And a, I'm a doctor, not a something joke from McCoy. Those are the must-haves. That's a start. <laughs> and that's all I can give you right now. Um, other than the series you have watched on here, what is your favorite movie you have reacted to so far? Blade Runner. 100% Blade Runner. Maybe my new favorite movie of all time. I love it. If you want to know why, go watch the reaction to it. Do you have any other favorite sci-fi shows? I remember I loved The X-Files when I was a kid. That's one thing that I watched with my dad. Uh, I was really young when I watched it, so I don't really remember like specifics, storylines and things like that. I loved Mulder and Scully. And when I was in seventh grade in my art exploration class, we had to draw a portrait of a celebrity and while everybody else was drawing Leonardo DiCaprio I drew David Duchovny. Who are your favorite Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra characters? Zuko, Sokka, and Tenzin. Do you collect art and is there a particular art style that you find fascinating? I don't really collect art but when I was younger my dad had a couple books on MC Escher and I fell in love with MC Escher. I got a calendar of him, his work for one year. So he's definitely one of my favorites. And I really also enjoy surrealism, like Salvador Dali and that kind of stuff. And like, especially if it has like a sci-fi twist to it. But yeah, it's not really something that I've really delved into too deeply. And I probably should. Okay, Zanzibar. Hi, Zanzibar. Uh, would you rather fight a spock size triple or 20 triple size Spocks? I would go with 20 triple size Spocks because I think that would just be the most amazing thing that I've ever seen in my life. Um, I would definitely not survive, but I would die happy. What other series are you planning to watch? Well, we've talked about the Star Trek ones already that I plan to watch. And so that's going to keep me busy, like, forever on that front. When I'm finished with The Legend of Korra, I want to stay towards the kind of, like, anime realm. And I was thinking of giving One Piece a try. Just to test the waters, see if there's any interest. That one would keep me busy for a long time. And I've always kind of wanted to watch it. How do you find the energy to stream for four hours every day after work? I don't always have the energy... But it's something that I love so much that I couldn't imagine not doing it. The community is really lovely. I've known a lot of these people for years and years of my life. We all have a lot of similar interests. And like I was saying before, I just love video games. Some of the best stories that I've ever experienced in my life come from video games. But the interactive and endless possibilities nature of video games is just really exciting. Uh, I have some... Well, this is some more fantasy that didn't really fit. By Tamora Pierce. The Immortals series. I have some Shel Silverstein. And a lot of this stuff is just kind of stuff that didn't fit in any other section. Um, kind of like the miscellaneous pile. A lot of stuff from high school that I read. Um, we have some like tragedies here. We have 
some Shakespeare, um, Flowers for Algernon, To Kill a Mockingbird, Dr. Zhivago. This was my dad's, I think. Um, these were from school. This was my dad's. Love the movie, too. All Quiet on the Western Front. Walden 2, I just read this. Lord of the Flies, I just read this. This series is a series that my one of my co-workers, she bought for me, and she said, we're going to read these together. So I've read two of them so far. And um, it's by Mia P. Manansala, and they're, they're murder mysteries. They're, they're pretty cool. I like them. Easy Reads, Fault in Our Stars, Phantom of the Opera. You can just pause and see some of these. Joy Luck Club, Night by Eli Weissel. Oh, one of my favorite books when I was a kid, The Dancing Cats of Apple Sap. And this I got recently as a gift. World's Greatest Powers from Ancient Times to Today. Thank you, Will. I'm really excited to read this one. A little nonfiction, which is not usually what I do. And then this is kind of like my new uh, purchases or um, gifts that I requested. Or, well, these I didn't request. I showed you these already. These were gifts, the Trekker's Guides. But I also recently got, well, this one I've had for a while. I just, um, I finished this one recently. Um, so I purchased iRobot. Do androids dream of electric sheep? As well as the complete fiction of H.P. Lovecraft. I read a lot of these online, but I wanted to have like physical version of it. And then I also got, look at this, Harlan Ellison's Greatest Hits and Childhood's End. I put these up on my throne and uh, they were purchased, so thank you. You know, Soul Blazer got this one for me. And uh, yeah, these I just, I'm really, really um, excited to read those as well. So I have a lot, um, I have a lot ahead of me. Oh, and I have a bunch of Harry Potter books. Of course, I grew up with Harry Potter. Um, but nothing else is really interesting over here, and it's kind of shoved into the corner at the moment, so I can't show you properly. There's just a bunch of, like, school workbooks and stuff in there. Uh, cookie cookbook, things like that. Lastly, just some posters that I put up. I have a cool artist rendition of the anime Kill la Kill, which is one of my favorites. And then down here, same artist for Final Fantasy VII. A classic, a Star Wars poster that was a gift from my friend. The same one who bought me the Han Solo trilogy. And my most recent addition to all of this that I got from a very talented artist at a convention. That's it. Okay, that's about it. Hope that answered all of your questions. And if you have any questions, then just let me know. So when you finish the series and return to the movies, are you going to pick up where you left off at Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock, or are you going to double back and watch Star Trek the motion picture. I am going to go through all of them starting with the motion picture. I'm going to re-watch The Wrath of Khan and then we're going to go into uh, the search for Spock. Eva been to Canada? I've actually never left the United States. I don't have a passport. I've never been even to Mexico or Canada. Are you going to watch any Studio Ghibli anime? Or is it Ghibli? I never know. I've already seen a lot of the major ones. So I can't really say that I will or won't. So I'm open to it, but I don't have any plans to watch any more right now. But yeah, I grew up with Princess Mononoke. It's absolutely one of my favorites. And I've seen probably all of their bigger movies as well. Totoro, Howl's Moving Castle, Spirited Away, Grave of the Fireflies. Ugh, never again. What am I hoping for most going forward with my Star Trek journey? That everybody sticks around and stays with me. That's, that's all I could really hope for. I'm curious what your preferred type of film genre is. I don't think I'm really that picky. I really love sci-fi, things that lean towards the psychological or maybe philosophical, something that really gets me to think, something with a really heavy atmosphere. 
I feel like I just tend to lean generally towards the more serious. But then again, I really liked like Gremlins and stuff. That was like some really good comedy. I like weird shit. I like weird depressing shit. I think that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> Would you rather be friends with Spock or Han Solo? I've always been kind of a goody two-shoes, so I don't know if I'd want to get involved with Han Solo's more kind of like illegal activities. How have you been received by the larger Star Trek community and fans overall? Did anything surprise you? I guess I'm just a little bit surprised on how many people say that I'm overthinking Star Trek and I need to stop um, taking it so seriously. But aside from that and the occasional unpleasant comment about why I suck because I'm a woman or because I'm younger than them and I couldn't possibly understand what I'm seeing on the screen because of that, the vast majority have been really, really awesome. And I guess I'm just really surprised about the amount of people that really seem to connect with what I'm saying about Star Trek and my experiences with it. It's just been like a lot. A lot of people that have been really great. So thank you guys. What is your overall opinion of Star Trek now? Is it entertainment? Has it influenced you? Well, overall, Star Trek has amazed me and I love it, which you guys already know. Aside from the fact that the universe is so well realized, so so alive feeling, I think the, the lessons and the morals and I think there's a lot of interesting ideas. I think the characters are amazing. They're very well written. Visually, it looks super interesting. The costume design, but... I really just love how it makes me think. It makes me think about the world and the universe and life and relationships and how to be a good person. And it's constantly surprising me. And I never ever know what to expect. So it's super exciting. So yes, it is entertainment. Yes, I feel like it has influenced me because sometimes when I'm replying to like a comment that someone's being mean to me and I want to like you know, snap back at them and I'm just like, what would Kirk do? You know, what would Kirk do in this situation? Just because they're being quick to judge me without knowing me at all, should I, should I judge them? It's hard and I don't always succeed, but just like Kirk said, we have the choice today. When is my birthday? March 16th. Okay, I didn't answer all the questions, but I did answer most of them. Thank you guys again for supporting me, for being part of the community, and hopefully we can grow the community even further so that I can maybe afford to get that editor so that we can have more movies and more Star Trek and maybe more other stuff too, I don't know. Alright guys, that's it for now. I am exhausted. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video, alright? Bye!